Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. Another day, another plant to discuss. Ito na naman ang inyong hardinerong kapitbahay na sasabing, tara, usap tayo. Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. This is Ephraim and you're watching Planting with Ephraim Grace. As a plant enthusiast, we often look for some plants that are beautiful and we end up buying the most expensive one. But actually, there are some plants that you could choose that is quite affordable for us uh, and equally give us a beautiful type of foliages. And one of those plants that I'm going to recommend to you is this particular plant. This is called Royal Discolor Tricolor or Tadescantia Spatea. It is also known as the Moses in the Cradle both lily and moses in a boat. This particular plant, the wild type of this particular plant is native from Mexico to Guatemala. Okay? So, as you can see with this plant, this is a perennial evergreen succulents with three toned leaves. And that leaves particularly are pink, green, and cream shades. Okay? And in the undersides of it, you can be able to see there is a pinkish purple colorations. Okay? So this plant is quite gorgeous for uh, hanging plants as well as as a pot, okay, or put in a pot. So this plant also is uh, considered to be a tolerant or drought tolerant and very low maintenance. However, you must be take care or you must be able to take care of this plant because this is quite sensitive, because um, it is easily being broken because of its soft stems here, as well as the uh, the leaves that are I think uh, fleshy type of leaves. As you can see also the bracts here or the, the, the leaves here is also coating or hugging the, the, the main stems here. Okay? So, how, am, how are you going to take care of this particular plant? So, one of, the one of the care tips that I'm going to recommend to you is about the light. The light or the light requirements for this plant is actually partial shade or to pull shade. Okay? That is actually, uh, this plant is a, an ideal plant for our indoor uh, house plant. In terms of its what, uh, in, in terms of its soil, the soil mix uh, that we are able to use here is actually the cactus and succulent soil, or we could consider a pumice rocks, a uh, humus rocks, as well as with some um, coco wire. Okay, so that actually maintains a particular moisture of this particular plant. Now, in terms of watering. So I, I told you a while ago that this one is a drought tolerant type of plant. However, we must be able to look into the soil itself. When the, when the soil is al already dry, we have to, um, uh, you have to water this plant thoroughly. Okay? So, but do not, uh, uh, do not um, put this plant or sit in a soil that is actually uh, uh, contain or plug more water on this particular soil. Because uh, we have to prevent the root rot and other fungal disease to dominate this particular plant. Now, how about the fertilizer? Well, a well-balanced pH, uh, well pH is actually a, recommend uh, a recommendation for this plant. So, we could use a general fertilizer as, uh, as for the beginners, especially when this particular plant is actually in its growing period. Okay, like this one is actually in growing periods so definitely um, the best way to put a fertilizer or the best way the best time is to put fertilizer on this plant okay because it is still growing now um, in terms of the what else uh, in terms of um, propagation as you can see here you're able to observe that there will be or there is now a small shoots that's actually occurring from these stems. In this case, we could, uh, when this one grows enough, it could get this one or these shoots or outgrowths uh, from the mother plant and you could uh, plant that already in a pot. However, before you plant that one, we have to submerge that or we have to put that in water so that it will develop some roots. When a one inch root is actually produced by this plant, definitely it is ready for you to transplant that plant into a new pot to develop a new uh, plant of this, uh, of, of, uh, a new plant of this one. Now, in terms of the humidity and temperature, the temperature that is actually recommended for this plant is 13 to 27 degrees Celsius. Uh, typically, the, te the, the temperature of 
uh, inside the house. Okay, so 13 to 27 degrees Celsius is actually being met on the inside the or uh, in, in in the in the house or indoor plants or for the indoor plants. So uh, since that is the case, I think this will be best uh, to be placed um, inside the house as well as it could be placed in any part of our um, in our uh, corners or in the corners of our house. Okay, in terms of the humidity, of course, we have to maintain a moderate to high humidity uh, levels for this particular plant. So in order for us to maintain particular colorations or the color of this uh, beautiful plant. Okay, so uh, what happened if we're not able to put that? Uh, most probably, if we're not able to put that in a in a in a in a environment that does not receive enough, um, I mean, enough humidity, definitely we have some problem regarding with the occurrences of some diseases. And in line with that, uh, what are the pests that we have that we can uh, that we are expecting for this plant? Of course, this particular plant uh, is actually prone with some insects like mealy bugs, uh, spider mites and white flies because they house in the leaves since it is uh, um, it is uh, it is it has a fleshy type of leaves so definitely those uh, pests will definitely suck the 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 juice from the plant so we don't want to do that or we don't want that to happen with our plant so in order for us to prevent or to cure that particular infestations of the pests we could apply some neem oil uh, through spraying it in our uh, plant or we could apply some in in text, uh, insecticidal soap to eliminate those different pests okay now you also have to watch some root rot as I've told you a while ago uh, we could own we uh, root rot can occur if the soil is uh, wet and contains lots of water so we have to avoid those things with this particular plant now you may be asking despite the beauty of this plant this plant is considered to be toxic, okay? So the sap of this plant definitely can cause irritation and skin rashes. So definitely, it's a big, big no-no for the pets and our children to come close with this particular plant. Especially, aside from being, um, aside from being um, sensitive, that you can easily break the stems as well as the leaves. So it also produces some uh, toxins that might hurt our family members or our beloved pets. Okay, so I think uh, this one you could have it in a very affordable amount of or in a very affordable uh, money. So I don't think you do, you have to look for other places uh, to buy the most expensive one because at uh, this one uh, you already got enough of it. Okay, so um, again. This is Ephraim and Grace.